Okay. Okay, with the yeah. We're going to begin today, Daf Chof Dalit. And we're holding Daf Chof Gimel Ahmed Bays uh, about like, uh, I would say like uh, roughly like four, um, 14 lines from the bottom of Chof Gimel Ahmed Bays. Hi, Alan, we just, we're just beginning. Okay, Chav Gimel Amit Beis, 14 lines from the... From the from yeah, so we're starting Gufa. I want to point out, I want to, it's very interesting just to know that, you know, we're doing Mesech the Nazir, and we did Be'ez, we did Be'ez Hashem, Mesech the Nadarim, and then there's going to be another Mesech called Shavuos, and then there's another Mesech called Erechem. Four out of the 36, the 36... Uh, the 36 uh, Gemaras in Talmud, four out of 10% deals with uh, the uh, things that come out of your mouth. Yes, 10% deals with things that come out of your mouth. So uh, we see how Choshev that is. Okay, so here we begin the Gemara. Okay, uh, let me just move this to the side. Okay. Look at the Gemara. Gufa. Amar Rav Yehuda. Amar Rav. Rav Yehuda said in the name of Rav. La Oilam Yaasik Odom Betayra U Mitzvus. A person should busy himself with Torah Mitzvus. Afilo even Shloi Lishman. Even if he's not having the purest intention. Shemitayich Shloi Lishman. Because even from the, from starting off doing uh, learning Shloi Lishman without the purest intentions, Bal Lishman, you'll come to the purest intentions. What that means, I think it means like this, that when a person learns Torah mitzvahs, he discovers within himself his uniqueness, his chelik elikai milmal, that God's neshama is within the person, and that he each person is unique and has his own mahalach in his own way. So a person should learn the Torah and mitzvahs, and then even if you don't have, if, even if you don't have that motivation and mood and, and discovery within you, because Eventually, once you get in it, when with uh, with since when you start off, you'll eventually come to the lishman, which is the ultimate self-esteem. And the Gemara gives a proof. There are forty-two carbonos. Balak uh, was makrif. Actually, it was Bilam who, who uh, was makrif, but Balak assisted him to bring to. Uh, 42 carbonis, Zacha Vyatsim Menorus. They were Zaycha that out of out of uh, Moya comes the, the the story of uh, of Rus. Uh, the Rus comes from that. You know, Rus is the mother of uh, the grandmother of David Amelech and the whole Malucha Sisra. So the Amma Rabbi Yaisi Barchanina, Rabbi Yaisi Barchanina said, Rus Bas Benoishal Egloin, Melech Moya Hoysa. Rus is the grandson, the granddaughter of Eglon, the king of Moab. And that's all because of Zchus of Balak, who wanted to, to bring these carbonates or help Bilam bring these carbonates, so to curse Klal Yisrael. But it, he had to do some sort of mitzvah, so to speak, to get God into a good mood. So his intentions of the mitzvah was completely shloilish mom, and yet some great reward comes from it. So don't give up if you don't feel uh, some holiness when you're doing the Torah mitzvahs, eventually, eventually you stick with it. Okay, hi, Lewis. We just began. We're in Chof Gimel is about 10 lines from the bottom. Amar Abchia Baraba, Amar Rabbi Yechna. Abchia Baraba, send me the name of Rabbi Yechna. Minayin, how would I know? Te'ein ha-Kodesh Baruchu mekapeach afila schar s'chichana. If uh, if a Kaddish Baruch Hu does not hold back any reward, even the reward of expressing yourself in an eloquent, eloquent, classy way, you know, you have to, yeah, you have to pick the right words, um, and and be, we'll see an example that a Kaddish Baruch Hu rewarded somebody who expressed himself in the right way. Remember, Lloyd slept with his daughters, and Lloyd slept with his daughters. So the oldest daughter, when they had a child, he called it Ma'av. He's saying that I got the, the, this, this son was born because of my father. So she publicized that she slept with her father. And therefore, the Ila Bechira decree say Ma'av, the oldest daughter of lights, called her son Ma'av. It comes from my dad. 
So she was expressing where who the father of this child was. Amalei Rachmana. So the Torah says the Jewish people al totzer es Moab, al tisker bomb and koma. You now let incite Moab, which the Torah says don't incite Moab to go to war with them because they're not part of the seven nations. But minchama who delight you now let go to war with them. Avotzuuri tsaarinan. We allow to terrorize them in order to force them into doing business or sub, being more subservient to the Jewish people. So that is what we do with Moab. Now, the youngest daughter also slept with her father, Lloyd, and they had a son, Amoin. And she didn't want to call it my father. She should call it, it comes from the nations, come from somewhere. ben Ami. She called her son, the son of my nation. She didn't, she, you can't tell who the father of the child was. She kept that hidden. Amalei. So therefore, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, We're not allowed to uh, start up with them or incite them or terrorize them in any which way. I feel it's so uri like to We're not allowed to terrorize them any which way because, because Amalei is on a higher pedestal than Maya. And it's only because the, their, their ancestor, their daughter of light, did not want to express who the father of the child was, and therefore she hid the, the child's father in the name. She, she did not uh, disclose it in the name that she gave to the child. So, so we see from there, HaKadosh Baruch Hu does not hold back any reward, even the, the reward of Sichanov, speaking nicely. Oma Rabbi Yechia Bar Oven, Oma Mishu Ben Karcha, Rabbi Chibar Oven said in the name of Rabbi Shimon Karcha, a person should be um, the first one to do, to bring himself to do a mitzvah. You be the first one to, to, to initiate doing a mitzvah. Because who both of them actually did the mitzvah, the oldest daughter and the youngest daughter. Because the, 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 the one that initiated this mitzvah of sleeping with light was the oldest daughter versus the younger daughter because she did it first. Zachsa, we go on top of the page. The Kadma Malchus. Because of her, even though great people come out out of Moyev, great people come out out of Amoin. But from Moyev, we have Oiva, Yishai, David, and Shloimai. And they preceded the, the, the great people that came out of Amoin, which was Rechavim. Ben Shloimei, because Shloimei married somebody from Amoin, and they had this great tzaddik, Rechavim. Um, so therefore, uh, we see that 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 it's the, that because the oldest daughter initiated this uh, Maisei Mitzvah first, so her generation of tzaddikim came prior to the generation of tzaddikim from Nama. Okay, brand, brand new Mishnah on the Avchavdali Ramad Aleph. The Mishnah says, let's just go one quickly through the Psukim. Very quickly, I bring it up on the screen over here uh, so that you to remind yourself the Psukim. The Chomish tells us that when the Zeus Taras and Nazir, when the Nazir completes the Naziris, he has to bring, he brings himself, I don't know, he should bring himself to the to the, to the the Mishkan, to the opening of the Oyal Mayed, and he has to bring a couple of Karbanas. Hikriv is Karbanoi Lashem, Teves Menshin Osoi, Tomim Echad Loila. You bring one sheep for an oila. The chafsa achas and a female sheep bashno saw in within the year tamima lechata. So one sheep, male sheep for an oil oila, a female sheep for a chatas. Ba'ayel echad one ram tamim, which is like a thirteen month old uh, uh, sheep. Lishlamim, you bring it for a shlamim. So three karbanis a nazi is supposed to bring when he completes his naziris or she completes his naziris. Now, this shlamim is very different than a regular shlamim. A regular shlamim, you have shnei yomim v'layla echad to eat it. You have two days and one night to eat it. Here, you have the day that you're makarvit and that night to eat it. So it's a different type of shlamim. And also, the Torah tells us, mesala matzoy soyuz chalz blues b'shamen. You take a basket of matzoy's, uh, which is, this matzoy's was made with uh, a dough that was mixed with oil before you bake it. And then Rukike Matzis, and then you have a wafers of matzahs, Meshuchem Bashaman, which smeared with oil after it was baking, and Chosim is gam. And the Torah tells us, you mark the chatas, you mark the oila, and the ayel you make for Zevach Shlomim with this sala matzis, 
and then you make the mincha and uniska. What do you do with this basket of machzas? So first, let's see, the Torah tells us, we're going to get back to this in a second, just to review. Then the Nazi takes a haircut, and then he puts his hair under the pot that's cooking the shlomen. And then, so the shlomen is meat that's going to be eaten by the Nazir himself. He takes it back to Yerushalayim and wherever he's staying and eats the Nazir's meat, the shlomen meat. But there's one part, an extra part belonging to the Kayin. It's called the Zraya, the right foreleg, not, not, not you know, the one closest to its paw, but the, the middle part of the of the fore, front arm of the of the of the animal. You cook it with the aisle, and that's gifted to the Kayin. Okay, that you're not allowed to eat. That's gifted to the Kayin. And you take one challah and one 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 loaf of matzah and one matzah wafer out of those 10 that you made, and then you put it on the hands of the Nazir after he took his haircut. And besides that, as every shlomim has a gift to the Kayin, the breast of the animal belongs to the Kayin, and also the back forearm, the back leg of the animal, that's called shoy katruma. So basically, you take the, the Kayin will take the hand of the Nazir, put it in his hand. On top of that, you'll have the, the breast, the, the 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 hind the right back leg the middle part of that back leg then you're gonna have the one matzah you're gonna have the right for, front leg four leg and then you're gonna have one matzah and one one loaf of matzah and one like like a high matzah I don't know how it's made and one matzah wafer and they make a wave and then once that wave is gone those are the gifts given to the kayim then and then, of course, the makar of stuff on the mezbeach. And then, then afterwards, you can drink wine. Okay, I just reviewed it so you, you know what we're talking about over here. Now we go to Mishnah. It's going to go very fast. A woman made herself into a nazir. And she got excited. And she's 15th day into her nazirus, let's say. And she separated her animals that, uh, that she's, when she's going to complete this nazirus, she's ready to bring the carbon. Okay, she's all excited. And then all of a sudden, the husband uh, uh, nullified her nether. So now she doesn't have to bring these carbonas. So she separated, not behemto, one animal, but three animals. Remember, one sheep for the oilo, one female sheep for the chatas, one ram for the shlomim. So she has three animals there that she can't even bring on the mezbeach because the party pooper, her husband, nullified her naziris nether. So what do you do with the animals? So the answer is, if the animals, where did she get these animals from? Uh, so the, she got the animals from her husband. So, well, go return it. It's not Kaddish anymore because your husband uh, didn't give you a right to take it, only if you're going to eventually need it. Now that you don't need it, so you have to give it back to the, to the put it back in the barn. The imshallah, but if it's her animals, now how's that possible? that a woman should own an animal without it being owned by the husband. We have a rule that anything a wife owns, it's automatically considered as if the husband owns. So the Gemara is going to deal with that. But there's a way that a woman could own, uh, even though she's married, she could have the animals that belong to her and not to her husband. So if she has these animals, then really she was she separated these animals and they have a kedusha to it. So the din is hachatas tamus. You take the chatas, the karma chatas, you starve it to death so it dies because she doesn't have to bring a chatas anymore. She's not a nazir anymore. A nazir only brings her karbonas only after they complete the naziris. But since in our scenario, on the 15th day already, she, she her husband nullified her nedar. So that means she doesn't have to bring that uh, female sheep for a chatas. So what do you do with it? it, it had, it's holy still. So, because she, she separated and called it a chattas. So therefore, you starve it to death. You actually put it into a pen, and then you don't give it food, and it dies eventually. The oila, the, the, the male sheep that she separated for an oila, you can bring it as an oila, because an oila can be brought as a donation. Anybody can bring an oila at any time. Shlomim, the shlomim, tikrav shlomim. The, the shlomim, you bring it up as a carbon shlomim, because shlomim, you could also donate a shlomim. But since you separate it and you're, she, her, she separated it as an intentional to bring it as a shalmei nazir, therefore, we give it one chumrah. You can only eat that shlomim one day. Not like any shlomim, you could have two days to eat it. This one, you can eat it only one day. 
But you don't have to bring along with it, uh, make tnufa about those chalas and the uh, cold bread, the matzahs that you're going to give to the kain. Because this is not uh, this is not brought uh, on behalf of a nazir uh, because she's not a nazir anymore. And of course, uh, the, the, they all speak about you don't also have to gift the zroya, the arm of this animal. You don't have to gift that to the kain either. Just the chazi the shaykh, the breast and the back leg you give to the kayim, but not the zraya, because it's, she's she's not really a nazir. Uh, she's just separated it and thinking that she's going to bring it as a shalmi nazir, but she wasn't really a nazir. Now, let's say she was excited, and instead of separating animals, she owned money, and she and and it was her money, and she separated the money, and she took this pile of money. With this money, when I'm going to complete my naziris, I'm going to buy carbonis, a chatas, and an oila, and shlamim, all from this pile of money. Now, now what's the den? So <clears throat> now what's the den? You have a chatas mixed up with a shlamim and oila, and what happened, of course, the husband was made for the nether, and she's not a nazir anymore, but now she has a pile of money that she said that I'm going to buy carbonus with it. So the Mishnah says, you have to take that money and go to the pushke in the base of Mignish and drop it in there. And that's a halacha l'mayish right? And what they do with that money, it's called, they buy carbonus tzibar, a carbonus oilus for the tzibar when, when they had no money or when they wanted to keep the the base of Migdash busy, they used to bring oilers, uh, plain oilers. Uh, so therefore, that's where that money should go. But most mifurashim, but let's say she said she took a pile of money and separated into three parts. With this part, I'm buying uh, one sheep for the oiler. With this part, I'm buying a female sheep for the chatas. With this part, I'm buying uh, a ram for the shlamin. So now she separated. So the me chatas, the money that she separated for chatas, well, she doesn't have to bring a chatas anymore. Yel chuliyama melech. You throw it in the salt sea because loy nehenish. You can't benefit it from it because it's it's it, she separated for kedusha, but she can't bring that chatas because she's not. She turns out she's not a nazir because her husband was made for the nether. So she doesn't have. She doesn't benefit. She's not allowed to benefit from that money. Loy my alan. But if she does benefit, she didn't get a avera of meila because the avera of meila is only. And you could you you benefit from an animal, let's say that's koydish lashem that's supposed to be brought on the mizbeach. Here, it's not brought on the mizbeach, so therefore, there's no meila over here. The may oila, the the money that you separate for oila, you be oila, you bring it for a carbon oila, you buy oila. So because an oila you can always donate. Oh my alan behen, and you and you have meila on it because since it's a something that could be brought on the mizbeach. So, and if you benefit from it, you're going to get a big Avera called the Me'ila Avera. The May Shlamim, if the, the money that you're supposed to buy a Shlamim, Yaviu Shlamim, she should buy a carbon Shlamim, but Shlamim is a Kachim Kalim type of animal. So there's no Me'ila anyway by, by a carbon Shlamim, by the animal that, or the money that you separated for a Shlamim. So she should bring a shlamim, and then benecholim echot. She should only eat it for one day. Veinatula echam, and this, and she doesn't have to bring the the matzahs and the chalas, the the loaf uh, of matzah, along with that shlamim. And there's again no zroya. Okay, so this is the story with a woman who made herself a nazir, and and uh, separated animals excitingly, separated animals during her naziris, and then she finds out her husband was made for the nether. So the Gemara asks a question. Man Tana, who's the author of our Mishnah? The Baal Loy Mishtabed Law. The, 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 that the Mishnah says that if it turns out that her husband was made for the nether, right? So then she should give back the animals. Or she should give back the animals. Why does she have to give back the animals? Because they belong to the husband. She has no right to take those animals because she turns out she's not a Nazir because her husband was made for the nether. So who's the author that holds that way? Rav Chizda, Rav Chizda said, Rabbanahi, that the author of our Mishnah is Rabbanam. The Isal Kedaita from Yehuda, if you want to say, our Mishnah goes according to Rabbi Yehuda, and we're going to explain what Rabbi Yehuda holds. Rabbi Yehuda holds that a, a husband is so obligated to his wife's uh, carbonos that if she takes those animals, she keeps it. If she's obligated to bring a carbon, the husband has to pay for it, has to gift it to her, and can never take it back. That's what Rabbi Yehuda holds. 
So Amai, so if the Amishta goes according to Rabbi Huda, Amai takes it the Sira Be'eda. Why should she have to return it back to the barn? He is obligated to give it to her and give it to her with no backseas. The Tanya we learned in Abraisa, where do you see that Rabbi Yehuda holds that a husband so obligated to give his wife the, those animals uh, that, that that's one of the responsibilities uh, that a husband has to do for his wife. You have to feed her, you have to give her money, you have to clothe her, and you also have to pay for her carbonis. How do you know that? The Tanya we learned in Abraisa, Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda said, a woman who is mechaif to bring a carbon, and the carbon is determined based on the wealth of the person. For example, let's say a, 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 a Betzoira, a woman who's a Betzoira, if she's wealthy, the Torah says she brings an animal. If she's not so wealthy, she brings a, a bird, and etc. or she brings a mincha. So like a carbon oil of yari, the same idea. So let's say her husband is wealthy, so then she has to bring a wealthy carbon. She can't say, uh, just uh, she can't say just because my husband's wealthy, the woman can get away with bringing a a, a bird as a carbon. Rabbi Huda said, Adam may be carbon ashir al ishtoy. A person's required to bring up, give his wife an animal if he's a rich person for his wife who's required to bring a carbon. You can't say to you to his wife, oh oh, because the, the money is in my name. And therefore, you're considered poor, and therefore you should you should be able to uh, bring a bird instead for the carbon. No, if the husband is rich, he has to pay, he has to give her the money to give or pay for that for that animal that she's required to bring as a carbon. A woman, a man is obligated to pay for all the carbonus that his wife is is responsible for. A person wrote that in the Ksuba. Where does it say that? Call the Islech Allah min Kadamas Gagmas Any, let's say, debt or any debt that you undertake or obligation that you have, I'm going to pay for it. That's basically what it says in the Ksuba. Therefore, a Behuda holds that uh, that since the husband is so obligated to pay for his wife's uh, animals, so if she took those animals and dedicated it as a carbon for her Naziris, and just because he was made for it, according to Rabbi Yehuda, you don't have to give it back. So therefore, Rabbi Yehuda cannot be the author of our Mishnah, and the author of our Mishnah is the Rabbanon, who hold that a man is really technically not, not responsible for, for giving his wife, uh, paying for his wife's animals. If he wants, he can let her take, but it's, it's, but it's conditional. He, um, but he's not so responsible for his wife. Rava Amma, Rava says, no, I feel the tamer Rabbi Yehuda. You could say our Mishnah goes according to Rabbi Yehuda. I, a person has to give the animals totally over to his wife and no backsies. Not true, says Rabbi, Rabbi Rava. He, our Mishnah could go according to Rabbi Yehuda. Ki mishabad law, when is a Hubble's husband obligated to pay for his wife's carbonas? Bemilsa de trichala. If she absolutely needs it, then the husband's obligated to pay for those kabonis. The Mils of the Light Srikala, but if she doesn't eventually need the kabonis, he doesn't have to pay for it. He doesn't have to pay for it. She has to return it because she's not using it anymore because her husband was made for it. So our Mishnah could go according to Rabbi Huda. So in this version, Rabbi Chizda said our Mishnah goes according to Rabbanan. Rava says our, our, uh, our Mishnah could go even according to Rabbi Huda. Igadamri, others say, Mantana. Who is the author of our Mishnah? Omar Rav Chizda, Rabbi Yehuda. Our Mishnah, Mishnah goes according to Rabbi Yehuda. And Rabbi Yehuda says, the, the question is, when the animals, when she took the animals, and the animals belong to the husband, the Mishnah says that you have to return it. Rav Chizda said that the author of, that mission, of our Mishnah is Rabbi Yehuda. Because although a husband has to pay for his wife's carbonize, Yes, Rabbi Yehuda holds that. But v'chi mishabed law, when does he have to pay for it? B'milsa de tzricha law, but with things that she does need. B'milsa de loy tzricha law, but if it turns out she doesn't need these animals, law, she doesn't have a right to take it, and therefore she has to return it. The e rabbana, because if you say our Mishnah goes according to rabbana, loy mishabed law klal, he never has to pay for it at all. He never has to pay for it at all. Yeah, because a person, if his wife took on an Aziris, okay, now take a, a waitering job at night to pay for your own carbonas. I'm not paying for it. So that's why the Rabbana hold, you're not obligated at all to pay for your wife's carbonas. So Amish is not like the Rabbana. 
How is it possible for a husband, according to Rabbanan, can a husband ever give over to his wife's, uh, pay for his wife's animals? Yes. If he totally gives over these animals to her, then it's hers. But if that was the case of our Mishnah, if it came in the Akhner law, if he gave it over to her, it's like her animals. It's her animals, and therefore it should be, have a din like her animals, which is din number two in the Mishnah, that those animals remain Kedushadik. They don't get returned to the to the to the to the barn. So therefore, Rav Chizda, according to this version, established our Mishnah according to Rabbi Yehuda. Comes along Ahmed Beis, of Haven Beis, Rav Ama, Rav says, Rav Ama, I feel the Rabbana. Even our Mishnah goes according to the Rabbanan. I, the Rabbanan, say that a husband's not obligated to pay for his wife's carbonas. So you're right. They, he never does. But sometimes, if he if he's a good guy, he's going to say, "Okay, honey, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a deal with you that if you somehow are in a pinch, I'm, I'm giving you I'm giving you the right to take the animals from the barn. It's yours." But Ki Makdala, when did he give her the right to take it? The Milsa de Trichala, only if she eventually needs it. The Milsa de Loy Trichala, if she doesn't eventually need it, Loy Maknula, then he doesn't give it over to her. So that's how you learn Pshat in our Mishnah. So basically, the question is how is it the Gemara just, just uh, answered that if she takes the animals and the animals belong to the husband and the husband nullified the nether, turns out that those animals are not needed for carbonics. So therefore, she had no right to continue to take it. Therefore, the Kedusha goes off the animals and she had no right to be Maktashim. And therefore, she has to return it back to the barn. Next part of the Mishnah. The Mishnah said, But let's say it was her animals. She had owned animals that had nothing to do with the husband. It was like a prenuptial agreement. Katos, Thomas, the Tikrav, the Torah, the Gemara says, the, the, the Mishnah says, what did you do with those animals? The chatas you should kill, right? Let it die by itself. Then the oiler you bring on the mezbah. So Vreg Zimora, the question what we spoke out when we learned the Mishnah, Himanola, how does she own something that the, that the husband has no rights to it? Ha'amret, don't we say all over, Masha Konsa Isha Konsa Bala, whatever the wife owns, it automatically is owned by the husband. So she owns nothing. Amr Papa. My papa says, yes, it's possible for a woman to have her own little pocket money that she bought animals with. Shekimatsta me'isasa means she, she squirreled away part of her allowance, basically. She held back from eating and she, she got an allowance from the husband. And then she squirreled it away and saved up, ate less, and she saved up this money to buy these animals. They're, those animals don't belong to the husband at all. Or eat by the same if you want. Uh, let's say she had a rich uncle that gave her animals, but on the condition that your husband has no rights to it. The Somebody gifted it to her, and told her, I'm giving it to you on condition, that your husband has no right for it. So therefore, that's how uh, uh, it leads up to the situation where a woman can own something that not necessarily belongs to the husband. One last piece of Gemara. The Mishnah said, Oila tikrav, Oila vashlomim tikrav. Remember, she, the animal, the ram that she separated for as an animal, as a shlomim, she has to bring it up as a carbon shlomim. Uh, um, although she's not a nazir, but a shlomim is a shlomim. And therefore, she brings it up as an, as an animal. She gifts over the chazir v'shoik to the koyin, and then she, he, he can eat the meat. But the one thing it doesn't have, one, she, he could only eat it for one day. Right, he can only eat it for one day, the nazir, uh, and but he doesn't bring the breads with it. He doesn't bring the chalas with it because again, he's not a nazir. It turns out she was not a nazir. So the Gemara discusses that there are similar cases where we'll say that a person brings a shlamim and will not bring the breads with it. Amalei Shmuel, Shmuel said la Avu bar ihi. It's a very strange name. He said to his friend Avu bar ihi. Shmuel said. To him, I don't want you to sit down. If till you explain to me the following things. Sometimes there are four situations, four scenarios where you have a ram and that, that were dedicated to be a Shalmi Nazir. But those Shalmi Nazirs, don't need bread. So I know what they're called. I just don't know what the details are. 
Shaloi v'shalav v'shalacha misa v'shalacha kapara. Those four scenarios are cases where you're not you're going to bring it as a shalmi nazir, but you're not going to bring the bread. Shalah. So the first case was it was her animals. Hada amram. That's the mission. That's our case in the Mishnah. A woman made a nether that she's a nazir. Fifteen days into it, she separated her carbonas. Then her husband was made for the nether. So the shlamim, she brings the shlamim, but she doesn't bring the breads. So that is the case of our Mishnah. Shaloi, there's another case where it belonged to him. How is that? What's the, what's the case? Another case is the Tna. Listen to this Mishnah. A man made his son a Nazar. A man, let's say, is very far from, and he, he's a Nazar, and he said, I want my boy to be a Nazar. So a father has a right to do it, but the mother has no right to do it. But we give this little baby boy, let's say, let's say he's seven years old, that he can decide he doesn't want to be a Nazar anymore. If he takes a haircut, or some relatives come and give him a haircut, or he objects being a Nazar, or his relatives say, we can't make this young poor kid into a Nazar. So let's say he was, a, he, he, he was so excited that his son was a Nazar, and now it came foiled by it because the son rejected it. This boy rejected being a Nazar that his father made him a Nazar. But let's say during that time, the man separated, uh, he was thinking that his boy is going to finish out the Naziris, he separated money to bring Karbonis. So if he didn't specify what the money should be used for, so then Yiplu Ladava, you have to just donate it to the base of Mingdash, to the Kayat Samizbeach, to the that they should buy Karbonis oilus with it. But Mois Mufoy Russian, but let's say he separated. This money is for my boy. He's going to finish out his Naziris. I made him a Nazir. I'm so a proud dad. I made him a Nazir. This money will be a Chatas. This money will be an Euler. This money would be the Shlomim. So then, and now it turns out that the boy refused this whole idea of Naziris. So then he's not a Nazir. The May Chatas Yelchul Yam Melech. The money of the Chatas you throw into the Yam Melech. The May Euler, the money of the Euler, Yaviu Euler, my Alan Behem. The, the money of the oila, you bring it as an oila and you get me'ila with it because you're supposed to bring it as a carbon oila. The may shlamin, the money of the shlamin, yaviyu shlamin, you bring a shlamin. V'nechol yamecha, this shlamin you eat for one day, v'einan tu'unan lechem, it doesn't eat bread. So here's another case where, where a man is going to bring a carbon shalmi nazir, but he's going not going to eat, bring it along with the breads that come with it. What's two more cases of a, of a shlamin that's brought? And you don't bring the breads. La'achamisa. If the Nazir died, Menolam, the Tanya we learned in the Maisha. Hamafrish moyes linizirasai. If a person separated money, let's say he's a Nazir, and he separated money for his Naziris, right? And and uh, so then, loy nehen of loy ma'alambem. There's no hano, you're not going to benefit from this money, and you don't get mi'ila, you know, if you do benefit from that money. Let's say you took it to the store and bought a, bought, bought a candy with the money. That was supposed to be for your carbonus naziris. You don't get the carbon meila. Why? Because it's not specified. Because that money could have been maybe for one part of your naziris, the shlamim part of your naziris. And as we said, shlamim is kachim kalim, and there is no meila on kachim kalim money. But what happens, but this is the point. Mis, mace, a guy separated money for his Naziris. He's so excited he's going to finish. And he finished the Naziris. And he's supposed to bring the Karbanas Naziris. But then he died. So he had money that was unspecified. So if it's one big pile of money that was supposed to be by, by a chatas, a shlayla, and a shlamim, you throw it into the pushka. But if he separated out, he was very organized. He separated, this is going to be my oil. This is my chatas money. This is my shlamim money. And then he died. So the mechatas you have yama melech lo inanim lo imalim. We've seen this before. The mechatas you throw into the yama melech. The me oil the money of the oil you be oil my alim behem. The me other the money of the oil you should bring a carbon oil with it. The me shlamim you be a shlamim. The the money of the shlamim the family of this guy that died you bring a carbon shlamim and you the nechol and yom echad ain't in tuna lechem. So you have it eaten for one day and they don't have to bring the breads. One last case of a case bringing a shalmi nazir when you're not going to bring the breads with it. What's the case? That means, let's say, 
a, a man was supposed to bring a Shalmi Nazir. And what happened? It got lost. So he brought a replacement. And then he found the original Shalmi Nazir. So that Shalmi Nazir, you bring it as a, as a Shalmi Nazir, but you don't bring the breads because you already yotzi your mitzvah of Shalmi Nazir by bringing it substitute. So that, the Gemara says, Svarahu. That's a, that's a logical case. When a person died, why, do you, why don't you bring the breads? Because he's not, he's not, he's not, uh, he's not getting any kapar because he's dead. The, the Nazi died, so therefore he's not bringing breads. So if he brought a substitute Shalmi Nazir, and then he found his original Shalmi Nazir, it's not uh, worthy of a kapara. Therefore you don't bring the breads. The point of bringing the breads is this a shalmi nazir in its completion. So therefore, uh, if you're ready with yaitse, your shalmi nazir. So therefore, the second time, this, this, when you find the original shalmi nazir, you don't bring the breads. The Gemara ends off with one question. The Su Leka, is there no other case of a shalmi nazir that you don't bring the breads? Or well, Ika, we have another case. Usha called shalmi nazir, a regular shalmi nazir. You shechted it. And you, did, you were thinking it's another carbon. You forgot that it's a shalmi nazir. You thought it's a regular shlomim, let's say. Kisherim, you, that's kosher. It's a regular shlomim. But the, the, the owner did not fulfill his obligation because he's thinking about something else, that it's another carbon. But you eat this carbon one day. You don't give, bring the breads or the, the forearm because... He, he already had in mind that it's going to be a, a, a regular shlomim, not a shalmi nazir. So why don't we bring that case of a sh- real shalmi nazir that you messed up in, in your thinking process when you actually sl- slaughtered the animal? So that should be the fifth case of a shalmi nazir that, that's brought and you're not bringing the bread. Answers the Gemara, when you're doing it correctly, that's part of the counting that we're doing. Like a mitzvah, if you're messing up, like a chashev, that's not part of this count. What our count that we're using of shalmi nazis that don't bring the breads are actual people that fully intended to bring a shalmi nazi, but for whatever reason, they had their kapara already, or they're not required to bring a kapara, and therefore they bring the shalmi nazi, but they don't bring the breads. So this ends this, this part of the Mishnah. Okay. Oh, yeah.